Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, we discuss the very important visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to the United States. This is historic in many ways because this was the first time that he was traveling to the United States after the pandemic came about. And also, it was the first formal head of government face-to-face um, -face meeting of the new grouping, uh, which has emerged several years ago, but has assumed importance. That is the Quad. It is also in the context of the crisis in Afghanistan, and also uh, the confusion created uh, by the creation of yet another military alliances called AUKUS. Of course, the Prime Minister also uh, addressed the General Assembly. That was the only um, program that he had in New York on his way back. So we have to deal with three different aspects of the visit. First is the bilateral aspect. Uh, though this is the first time that uh, Prime Minister Modi is visiting Washington with Biden as president, they have known each other for a long time because Mr. Biden was the vice president of Barack Obama with whom Mr. Modi had a very good equation. Uh, not only that, ever since Mr. Biden became president, there have been several crises and several issues on which they had to talk to each other. Uh, the China issue, the Afghanistan issue, the, the problems um, in uh, international affairs, the pandemic, uh, the climate change. So, so many issues came up. And this was not like one of those uh, getting to know each other meeting. They knew each other fairly well. But still, it was the first formal meeting in Washington in the White House. That was significant. But interestingly, there was no bilateral issue to be discussed. Very often, when such meetings take place, uh, the, there will be some issue which will dominate. How is this, go this issue going to be resolved? There was really no such issue because the line of both the countries were known on all the issues that they, that they discussed. Uh, but this visit came as a, as a kind of morale booster to Mr. Biden, because he was down and out in a sense on two reasons. One, the ignominious exit from Afghanistan, which had created a huge number of problems. And Mr. Biden had to repeatedly say that he could have done it better and his uh, rating had gone down considerably. The second is the uh, very quick and unexpected announcement of AUKUS, the Australia, UK, US alliance, uh, military alliance in fact. Just a few days before the, um, uh, the Quad was supposed to meet in Washington. And this surprised all the partners, but more importantly, it created a, a revolt in his Western allies because France was very upset that this particular uh, military alliance would get France's arrangements for manufacture of diesel um, submarines for Australia. So they had a very huge contract. And instead, what the alliance did was, in fact, they say, the alliance was in fact designed in order to give um, Australia the nuclear propelled submarines. These are not nuclear weapon submarines, you must remember, but even nuclear propelled submarines, the technology United States only had, and it had shared it with UK. But after all these years, nobody, no other country was given that technology. And that could be given only if there was an alliance. So since there was this increasing uneasiness between Australia and China, Australia earlier was quite close to China, 
As a result of that, Australia felt somewhat vulnerable and wanted something more than the Quad. Because the Quad, the problem was that India was not willing to accept it as a military alliance. Of course, it is a security dialogue. But Australia wanted more than that. And that was not possible to accomplish within the Quad because Japan also is not very keen on alliances. And India has clearly declared that will not be part of any alliance. Otherwise, they could have just, adopt, just taken uh, UK also on board, the five countries unit, and that could have worked if India and Japan did not have these hesitations. So on the announcement of the AUKUS also, uh, the president had to face a lot of luck. So the arrival of his close friends from Indo-Pacific in Washington at this time, without any problems among them, was a great morale booster to Mr. Biden. And therefore, Mr. Biden was visibly, in his body language, visibly relieved and happy that he had his friends around him at this time. And Mr. Modi had an important place in, in that group. So as the only non-ally among his guests, Mr. Modi gave a morale booster to Mr. Biden by raising bilateral relations to a higher level and embracing the Quad even after the formation of AUKUS. Uh, the conversation was, as far as whatever we could hear or that reported, was very cordial. And he was very happy when Mr. Modi praised his vision and spoke of a transformative decay in bilateral relations. So this was an opportunity for both countries to give a vision of the uh, relationship. The meeting did not look like a you know, getting to know even. They were already engaged in a dialogue. And um, Mr. Modi, though he spoke in Hindi, uh, his words were translated at some, one stage as natural allies. His natural allies is a phrase first used by Mr. Adar Bihari Vajpayee. But it was also translated by some other media as natural strategic partners. These are two different things. But anyway, in the translation, both these expressions were used. So it seemed that uh, the relationship had reached a higher level. And so the cordial meeting was also possible because though India had its reservations of AUK, about AUKUS earlier, uh, the timing of the announcement and the nuclear proliferation aspects of our AUKUS was a bit uncomfortable for India. In fact, before the government of India responded, saying that uh, this is only a military alliance with which we have nothing to do, what is different and AUKUS is different, that was the official position put forward by the Foreign Secretary. But before the Foreign Secretary did that, a lot of writings in India, several people said that this is going to be uncomfortable for us because it's a full military alliance and we being in the uh, quad might create problems. And the other thing is that since uh, Australia is a signatory to the NPT as a non-nuclear weapon state, they are getting this technology would be questioned by some people, maybe the International Atomic Energy, for example, because how much of, uh, how much of enriched uranium, what level or what degree of enriched uranium can be used by NPT countries. And so this is a doubtful case, and we also didn't want to get embroiled in a discussion of that kind. But we found a solution, and that came as a very good uh, uh, opportunity for uh, Mr. Biden and Mr. Modi to establish a friendship on an equal basis. And also Mr. Biden felt very comfortable so Mr. Biden said that two um, of the largest democracies in the world are destined to be stronger, closer, and tighter. Very good words. And I think I can benefit, and it can benefit the whole world. So the, the formulation that bilateral relations, good for us, good also for the world. He also said that uh, this was the beginning of a new chapter in relations. And as the only country in the neighborhood of Afghanistan, which shares the US position, uh, India has become more important to the US than before. And that was also quite clear. 
uh, both the leaders as traditionally done uh, spoke about the contribution of the Indian diaspora, but the language was used was much more, much stronger and intimate. Mr. Biden said, and I'm quoting him, India-US relations are about family ties, including 4 million Americans who make the United States stronger every single day. I don't think any president has put in so many words and the, the cruciality of the Indian diaspora. And uh, this is evidenced by the fact that Mr. Biden has appointed more than 70 Indian Americans to very important positions in the administration. It is the largest ever Indian group in the White House and related responsibilities, many for which Senate confirmation is necessary. And that process is going on. So on the Indian community side also, which the community was looking forward to, they were very comfortable. Um, of course, they were not on first name basis like the time of Barack Obama. And of course, how hugs were ruled out. Usually those are the kind of things Mr. Modi does, but uh, neither first name basis because Mr. Biden was visibly older than him perhaps. And also, Hugs were not possible because of the pandemic. But that did not um, uh, prevent the two from creating a very cordial atmosphere. Uh, a, a meeting with uh, Kamala Harris, the vice president, was an important part of the bilateral exercise. And quite surprisingly, she on her own, without President Prime Minister Modi mentioning anything, she spoke about Pakistan and um, saying that uh, Pakistan has been harboring uh, terrorists and uh, this must be stopped. This was a surprise because the general belief is that uh, Kamala Harris is, uh, wants to project herself as a representative of the South Asian community. And uh, therefore she has been expressing concerns about Kashmir, somewhat friendly to Pakistan, etc. So everybody was a bit surprised that she brought up Pakistan on her own. But this should not be surprising because a few days ago, a change in attitude to Pakistan uh, was announced by the Secretary of State, Mr. Blinken, and um, you know, said that you know, we are reviewing. He didn't say anything final because they still don't know what use uh, Pakistan can be for them in Afghanistan situation. So they didn't blame Pakistan for anything, but Blinken did say uh, that there would be a, a review of the situation. And Mr. Modi was, of course, particularly warm towards her. And he extended an invitation to her to uh, come to India. And he put it very warmly to give us a chance uh, to celebrate your very victorious and long journey from a mother from Tamil Nadu to the Vice Presidency of the United States. And as Mr. Modi often does, he brought some documents to show that Mr. Biden had relatives in India and also some documents relating to Kamala Harris's uh, grandfather. This must have again improved the bilateral atmosphere quite much. But there was a slight uh, problem in uh, the Kamala Harris meeting because though she did not make any comment on India's democracy, a point on which the Americans are sensitive, uh, particularly after the Freedom House had relegated India to part democracy or partly democracy. So there has always been this thinking that this would be raised by somebody. And it was Kamala Harris who raised it, not the president. And uh, she said it was very interesting. She said, democracies are under threat everywhere. And therefore, it is imperative that we defend democratic principle and institutions within our respective countries. And that we maintain what we must do to strengthen democracies at home. And it is incumbent on our nations to, of course, protect democracies in the best interests of people of our countries. So she put America in the same category as an uncertain democracy. Because after all, all that happened in January 6th and Capitol Hill and all that, 
and how the election was challenged by Trump. So this is not a classical democracy. So it was not an accusation against India, which was imagined. Many people thought that this would be brought up by somebody. But she put it quite nicely, saying that, you know, we have this effort, we have to do both. As though both our democracies are in danger, but uh, the message was clear that they were concerned about some of the policies of uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi, without mentioning Hindutva or arresting of people or any of those things, without mentioning it, that we are both, as democracies, we have very clear responsibility. Um, and, uh, but Mr. Modi did not react to that. Everybody was waiting whether he would say something. He didn't say anything. He's, he didn't take it as a, as, an, as a criticism of India. And he left it there. But of course, later in the General Assembly session, he spoke about democracy at some length. And some people interpreted that as some kind of a reply that the Prime Minister gave to uh, Ms. Harris. But this is not necessarily so. Maybe that speech was written long before he met Kamala Harris. But India generally speaks about democracy and the strength of it. And what he said in the UN was India is the mother of democracies. You know, telling Kamala Harris, you don't have to teach me about, about democracy. Uh, but all this is fine, but everything in, what that happened in Washington had a China touch, quite unexpectedly. Whether it is in bilateral relations, whether it is squad, whether it is in general assembly. So it was, as they say, there's a phrase, the elephant in the room. You don't see it, but it's always there, you know, uh, stepping on somebody's toes. So that was the position of China. China was very critical of AUKUS, but not so critical of, um, of the Quad. Uh, and even the masks that everybody was wearing reminded everyone of the pandemic for which, in one way or the other, China was responsible. So it was very clear that both Quad and AUKUS were clearly designed to contain China in the Indo-Pacific. So China was seen propping up the Taliban regime in Afghanistan and raised off many known terrorists. And if it comes to climate change, China is the, um, is the largest emitter of greenhouse gases. And uh, China is crucial in that. But generally, criticism China was restrained. It was more by, by the circumstances and the issues discussed than specifically accusing China of anybody. Our Prime Minister did not talk about that arc. No such uh, conversation was there. Uh, but it was very clear that uh, China was the target of many of the things that were uh, declared, uh, the discussed. Uh, the revolt by France, I mentioned earlier, that um, uh, that was on, on account of some kind of an economic disaster for France. Massive economic loss on the cancellation of its submarine deal with Australia. Not to the strategic fallout of AUKUS. Uh, President Biden again, like in the case of Australia, said that we should have been more cautious in this case also. Uh, before we go on to the uh, required, uh, one of the more important uh, meetings uh, or several meetings that he had was, were the meetings with uh, the big uh, business enterprises. And he chose five of them who indicated his interest in modern technology in the US. One is the semiconductor and wireless technology company called Qual.com. These are all the top companies in the United States. The second was the software company, which we all know, Adobe. Then the renewable energy company called First Solar, again an important uh, initiative. Then an arms manufacturer, naturally, called General Atomics, that is relating to drones. They manufacture drones in which we are interested. And of course, most importantly, the investment management company called Blackstone. So the CEOs of all these uh, five companies had short meetings with uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, but these were obviously discussed in advance, and uh, we'll 
know fairly soon what kind of uh, business. And uh, some commentators say that this was the most important business that uh, Mr. Modi did in Washington by establishing contacts with, with these five people. Some of them are of Indian origin. As you know, many American companies, CEOs are of Indian origin. So well, that also was a, a good omen. So, so looking at the quad, uh, it has now developed, though that was not the original idea, that there are two alliances with two different purposes. So the military aspect, the security aspect, has to be necessarily handled by AUKUS. Because Australia, UK, and the United States are all allies, and they have now established even a greater compact like bringing them into the circle of two. Only two countries in the West knew about uh, uh, nuclear propelled uh, submarines. And so this has become a very thick and very close group. And so they would leave, it would leave the security aspects to that. And therefore, the, uh, the agenda that was formulated in the ministerial meeting of the Quad, which we thought was a distraction, now, they didn't go into the military aspects, but they talked a lot about other things. And now it has become a kind of division of labor. That is for the hard power focus to meet China and Indo-Pacific, and for the soft areas, and for the good of the people of the whole world as a whole, what? So that is a kind of a division. And in the quad, of course, we talk, they talked about uh, um, terrorism, one concern, it's not really military. Then the pandemic, climate change, technological, develop, technological development, and supply chains. All these are vital issues for the US and India. And there are many differences to be ironed out, even between us. Because on the pandemic also about manufacture of uh, vaccines, uh, the, um, the patent issues relating to World Trade Organization, a number of things and the cost for it and how many vaccines will be exchanged, what there are, there are many issues and the Quad certainly uh, can deal with these issues without worrying about, about China. Of course, China is again in the picture because the whole pandemic is with regard to uh, China. And uh, they issued a joint statement uh, which is quite substantial. If you look at the joint statement, you will see the preoccupations of the Quad. Uh, as far as terrorists are concerned, the statement said, we denounce the use of terrorist proxies and emphasize the importance of denying any logistical, financial, or military support to terrorist groups, which could be used to launch or plan terror attacks including cross-border attacks. So as you know, cross-border attack is a euphemism for Pakistani terrorism against India. Cross-border, that is the case. And then they also said, we also recognize that our shared values will be written in the Indo-Pacific. And we will redouble our efforts to ensure that the Quad is a force for regional peace, stability, security, and prosperity. So they don't leave out security altogether. And it also noted that the partnership in COVID-19 response and relief marks a historic new focus for the Quad. Because the pandemic is not yet over, we are in the middle of it, and much more may have to be done, hopefully may not, but if it's to be done, Quad has to take the, take the lead. So even if Quad did not do anything else, according to me, even if they handle the pandemic properly with the coordination of vaccine manufacturing and vaccine distribution and uh, coordination of scientific evidence. These are very crucial for humanity. So I would say that the Quad, even if it did not do anything else, it should be fully justified. And there is a commitment and um, the statement again says it's a bedrock of our shared security and prosperity a free and open Indo-Pacific. This is a word which we heard all over the discussion. Everybody spoke about a free and open Indo-Pacific. Again, it means euphemism against Chinese expansionism. 
Um, and um, the court took note of the fact that the COVID-19 had caused continued global suffering. The climate crisis has accelerated and regional security has become ever more complex. And therefore, they committed themselves to promoting the free, open, rules-based order rooted in international law and undaunted by coercion to bolster security and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific and beyond. All China will hear that very loudly. Further, they said that they stood for the rule of law, freedom of navigation and overflight, peaceful resolution of disputes, and naturally referring to South China Sea and Taiwan and Hong Kong and others, and peaceful and democratic values and territorial integrity of states, which of course also means Ladakh. So, Kuala did not leave out security issues, though the focus was on other things. The court leaders expressed some satisfaction about what they already done on COVID, which I think is not um, really true. Um, that none of them can really claim much success in bringing the infection level lower. The United States is bad, India is bad, Australia is bad. <clears throat> Japan also had very serious problems. So, and even vaccination, all the countries have done, not done uh, well. So for them to say that we are very happy that we have cooperated together, that I think was a uh, bit of an exaggeration. Now, the only thing is that uh, this squad gave an opportunity for prime ministers and presidents to focus on health matters without leaving it to their health ministers. Health ministers. On climate change, we all know that there are deep divisions in the Quad. In fact, India and China think generally alike because we are large emitters, but we want to see that uh, divided per capita. And then therefore, India and China will not be the top. Um, but as the only developing country in the group, India expects financing and technology because the United States is encouraging people to countries to move on to declare carbon-free uh, period, I would say. They are declared it's 2030, and the Chinese are saying 2050, and they are pressurizing India to declare a year, when we will also be, but net zero emissions. But this is not practical for us, unless we have a huge expansion in uh, nuclear, as well as uh, in um, renewable energy. And then, unless they do that, we'll still have to burn coal, and uh, fossil fuels. So India has very special in this group uh, because we need these. And these other three are the ones who have the technology which they can spare or sell. Then there was a, not a very significant, but a quad fellowship program, which will uh, provide undergraduate fellowships to leading science, technology, engineering, and mathematic graduates then economic and human rights. And they also agreed, the Quad agreed, that they will, uh, they will coordinate their policies towards Afghanistan and will deepen counter-terrorism and humanitarian cooperation in the months ahead. And they quoted the UN Security Council resolution, which was adopted with uh, India in the, in the chair. So that resolution had affirmed Afghan territory should not be used to threaten attack on any country, that the government should be inclusive. So by referring to Security Council resolution, they were supporting the position that India had taken. It reiterated the importance of combating terrorism in Afghanistan and denounced the use of terrorist proxies, etc. And uh, as I said earlier, cross-border terrorism was also mentioned. Then some odd issues were referred to uh, the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, which is causing concern because all that Trump tried to do did not materialize and North Korea is still as adamant as before to continue with their nuclear activities. Then the other threat to the region is the violence in Myanmar. That what is happening in Myanmar is as serious as what is happening in, uh, in Afghanistan. Except that, you know, it's a military dictatorship. Where is the democracy? There is no democracy there. 
but they are not engaged in terrorism against other people. That's the only difference. That terrorism is against their own people. So, but uh, this cannot uh, go on forever. And um, the vision for this partnership uh, among the Quad, so they identified many issues on which they have to work together. And so, as, a, our, as our Prime Minister said, uh, we could say the Quad has come of age. You know, all these doubts, India's worries about it becoming a nuclear military alliance was also uh, set at rest. So as a testament of the Quad, this joint statement, um, which is a consequence of a likely China-Pakistan axis. So the joint statement was quite comprehensive, but it fell short of a commitment that the Quad will take joint action of any kind. But that is, as I said, the job of the other alliance. Then the four countries will work together, security challenge and the link between the Quad and AUKUS assumes importance. And so bilateral relations between the US and India will amount to a strategic partnership in itself. So the Quad and partnership its link with AUKUS also gives the necessary muscle power to the partnership. So in a situation where India is determined that it will not be a party to any alliance and that it will maintain its strategic autonomy at any cost, India cannot expect any greater security guarantees. So we have got the best possible situation from that point. So China has reacted more sharply to AUKUS than to the Quad. Um, and uh, I mentioned the propulsion technology, etc. And the new characteristics of the Quad that have emerged in Washington has softened its image as an anti-China alliance, and it may encourage, this is my own view, it may encourage other countries in the region to join the group and thus increase its strength and reach. Because if other countries join, it will have to change the name, because Quad means only for people. So if uh, UK joined, what would have been? Somebody said jokingly, would it be called Pentagon? <laughs> because it will be five countries. So, so that will have to be worked out, what name the Quad will assume as more and more uh, people join or people are accepted. And that would be a long, long process. Indonesia, Vietnam, all these could be uh, candidates who to basically endorse the Quad philosophy. And lastly, the General Assembly. So the Prime Minister just flew into New York, made a General Assembly speech, and virtually left. I don't think he attended any other uh, function, because normally heads of state and heads of government in New York have many engagements. They are there several days, etc. But our Prime Minister could not be away for long, so he returned immediately, even before his speech was reported the press, he was back uh, in India. He brought, spoke broadly on a number of issues, which he normally speaks about. I didn't find anything exceptionally new uh, in his statement. He spoke about extremism and terrorism, etc., which of course is our standard. Then open seas and effectiveness of the UN. So these are the three things that we normally speak about. Sometimes prime ministers speak about all the issues in the world. But Mr. Modi has been focusing on some issues rather than reading out, reading out a whole a text saying A, B, C, D countries, we have the X, R, W, he said, a relationship that he did not do. Uh, but um, the one interesting thing he did was to invite, he spoke at length about India's manufacturing, vaccine, vaccine manufacturing capacity, and invited the whole world to come to India. And he mentioned some new technology that we have developed. He said, come, he said twice, come, come to India and uh, manufacture these vaccines. Uh, on terrorism, he used a new phrase, he said that those who are making use of terrorism should understand that it's posed an equally serious threat to them. That everybody knows. Pakistan itself says they are a victim of terrorism. So, but he also mentioned that Afghanistan's people must be supported. That is their, um, they should be given 
uh, assistance, humanitarian assistance, regardless of who is uh, ruling over your country. And about the oceans, he said, we should use the ocean, not abuse it. And then what UN, he repeated the UN reform, and um, he mentioned that in the case of uh, Afghanistan and in the case of the pandemic, UN has been facing a lot of criticism, and that is because the UN is not up to date. It still has the composition of 1945. The world has changed, and of course, he made no secret of his interest in becoming a permanent member of the Security Council. Of course, this is not going anywhere. So I don't know why he uh, repeats it, because it doesn't make any impact. Because two thirds majority and permanent uh, and uh, unanimity of the permanent members cannot be achieved in the present context, whatever may, may happen. And so I personally feel that the Prime Minister should not be giving too much emphasis to this. We should mention our qualifications, our eligibility, it's all been established. And leave it to the UN, because you cannot really force them to do anything. If we are useful, they must come to us. Anyway, that is my personal view. So then his speech about democracy, uh, this may be or may not be related to what uh, Kamala Harris said. He gave, um, he said, it's, India is a mother of democracy. And in a rather unusual uh, phrase, he said, he gave his own example. He said, look at me, a little boy who at one time used to help his father at his tea stall at a railway station. But then this must have completely yeah, taken people, uh, you know, by surprise. Many people may not have known this humble origin of the prime minister. But he mentioned it in the General Assembly and he said, look at me. I am such a, from a background, I have come. Except had it not been for Indian democracy, I would not have been standing here. It's the fourth time I'm interested in the General Assembly. It was a very touching reference, but rather unusual reference to democracy. Of course, the message that he is giving is that don't worry about India's democracy. Everybody is kind of worried about him, um, you know, uh, acting in a way that democracy would not be supported. So he said, if I am a product of democracy, how am I going to disturb democracy in India? He did not um, mention China or Pakistan by name, but it was obvious what he was talking about. But all of you know that the previous day, after Prime Minister Imran Khan spoke, the junior boss diplomat in the permanent mission. That is the tradition. Uh, we, a couple of years, we ignored the prime minister's, Pakistan prime minister's attack. So I was there for several years, so I used to know the discussion. What do we do each time when the prime minister speaks? So some people will say, our prime minister must reply, and somebody else will say, no, 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 our prime minister should not stoop to that level. And let the ambassador say, or they'll say, okay, let the deputy PR say. So I said it a few times. And finally, a decision came that uh, the junior most person in the mission will answer, you know, to show the content <laughs> towards the province. And then she also can use very strong language. And she did. She used very strong language. Of course, she has become a heroine because people think that it was her personal contribution to India-Pakistan relations. But obviously, this has been written with great care uh, by in, in the Ministry of External Affairs. But he delivered it beautifully with the right accent and the right uh, uh, significance. And the important thing which we have to remember is for the first time in the history, uh, in the history of India-Pakistan relations, India asked for vacation of the Pakistan of Kashmir. This, the BJP leaders have been talking about it. You know, POK is not gone. We need to do something about it also. But this is the first time that while saying that uh, the whole of Jammu and Kashmir is integral part of India, uh, she indicated that we have not forgotten POK. And therefore, when she said Pakistan must leave uh, Jammu and Kashmir, she specifically mentioned the Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Occupied Kashmir. So, in sum, briefly, Prime Minister Modi had excellent uh, bilateral discussions. Uh, extended a warm invitation to Vice President to visit India. That will be also an interesting to give the people of India a chance to celebrate uh, and reinforce the role of the Quad, even after the formation of AUKUS, send the right message to China and Pakistan, created a mechanism to fight the pandemic, 
and united the democratic world against autocratic regimes. That is why mention was made of DPRK and Myanmar also. So it's not only China and Pakistan, but there are other autocrats. And the fact that he accomplished all this in 65 hours, that is all the time that he got in, in the US. And it's quite remarkable. You know, he's a workaholic. They can work through the night. And apparently, on his return, the first thing he did was to go and see how the new parliament building was coming up. So that is tremendous energy that, that yoga gives as an example to all of us. Well, that is the assessment of the visit. And uh, this is very important from your examination perspective because these little things in different parts of the um, of the assessment will be will figure in one form or the other in any of the papers, whether it is in prelims or in or in mains. Of course, in um, the interview, if bigger things don't happen, <laughs> otherwise, that's what happens. When bigger things happen, we forget the earlier important ones. So these would remain and should be in your notebook and your memory for your examinations. Thank you.